Hello and welcome to the Elsa B. Smith Show. Our topic for today is the wheel of fortune, how to access your wealth and grow rich. And yes, I am talking about being financially rich as well as emotionally, spiritually, um, in terms of relationship, all of those riches, because all of those riches are within our means. Now, the wheel of fortune I'm referring to is the, the tarot card, one of the tarot major arcana cards called the wheel of fortune. When you get this card in a reading, it doesn't mean that you're going to win the lottery. Not Well, not necessarily. It might be. It might be. You never know which path you are on. But what this card shows is that spiritually, you're always in motion. You're always growing. So you need to take your time. You need to let go of things that don't belong to you anymore or that you no longer need in your life. And of course, the, this Wheel of Fortune card contains the word tarot, which is spelled T-A-R-O-T. And I'm highlighting that because tarot is referring to those letters which spell the word tarot are referring to so many other things that it is incredible how rich the, the symbolism on this Wheel of Fortune card is. The first word, that also comes from tarot, is rota, R-O-T-A. Now, what is a rota? It's a cycle which indicates evolution. You live your life in cycles. You learn and you grow from each cycle. Probably the biggest cycle is the cycle of life and death. Within that, you've got cycles of years. You've got cycles of hours. Um, you've got cycles of months. And a cycle of, of years, without, what I'm referring to there, is not necessarily a year consisting of 364 or 365 days. It's also the cycles that you can observe in hindsight in your own life. For example, a career cycle, a relationship cycle. Those cycles are anywhere between, between sometimes five, sometimes nine years. And then you go through a transition period and then you start the next cycle. So that's what Rotas refer to. From those five letters, you could also have Torah, T-O-R-A. What is Torah? That is the divine knowledge which is contained in ancient Hebrew scripts. You have access to that knowledge. You don't need to own a Torah to have access to the knowledge in the Torah because all of this knowledge is part of the collective unconscious. All you need to do is tap into it. And I will tell you later what, uh, how you can actually tap into this collective unconscious. The next word which is represented on the uh, Wheel of Fortune card is ORAT, O-R-A-T. What does that mean? That means oracle. This oracle also gives you access to, the, to your divine purpose. Speaking of divine purpose, here's the next word which is represented on the Wheel of Fortune. Tau, T-A-O. That word, Tau, refers to teachings of truth which leads to enlightenment. It's a Chinese word. So it's the Chinese word for the way or the path. But it's not only in this world and of this world. Um, the knowledge on the Wheel of Fortune is not only um, about the Chinese, there's also the Egyptian part, which is represented by the word tar, T-A-R. Now tar is an is abbreviation for Thoth, which is the Egyptian messenger of the gods and of goddesses and the advisor to King Osiris. So all the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians are also captured in this collective unconscious, which is illustrated on the Wheel of Fortune card. Another one, we're not finished yet. Another one, Ator, A-T-O-R. That's a short name for Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of nature. Hathor was also known as the sky goddess because she represented heaven on earth. So there's again the divine connection, which is part of this word tarot. And tarot, the word tarot, T-A-R-O-T, embraces all this knowledge that you now have access to. Um, this, but there's more on this card. If you look at the other images on the Wheel of Fortune card, there's a jackal-headed figure, which carries the Wheel of Fortune. That represents Anubis, which is the soul's guide through the underworld. Anubis gives you the assurance that the hand of God is available to help you even during the darkest times. So, bringing you from darkness into light. The Sphinx, which is sitting on top of the Wheel of Fortune, ensures that there's always balance. There's balance between dark and light, good and bad. Doesn't matter how the wheel turns, 
there is always balance. If the wheel starts from darkness, it can only go into light. If it starts from light, it will go into darkness, but it will return into light because there's always balance. Now, you're going to say to me, but the snake must be bad news. Actually, no. The snake on the side of the wheel is a symbol of life and death. Again, there's complete balance. It's divine energy, trickery, destruction, the rejuvenation. It's all complete balance. But then there's also the four archangels that are mentioned in the book of Revelation in the Bible, which form the cornerstones of the wheel of fortune. The first one is the winged man. Remember that saying, you are just a spiritual being having a human experience. That's why the winged man is a, is a man who has got wings. It reminds us of our spiritual beingness having a human experience. experience. The eagle on the card represents divinity. There's always this connection, this link between us and divinity. The lion, symbol of strength, inner strength, kingliness, dignity. The lion reminds us that we always have dignity and we always have that access to that inner strength which is based on self-knowledge and the bull brings us all sorts of teachings and knowledge just reconfirming re reinforcing that we go through this world having access to all sorts of teachings and knowledge so that's why the first part of, of the show, show is about the wheel of fortune the tarot card the wheel of fortune and a lot of it which is represented there is uh, pointing us towards the inner knowledge, the knowledge of the uh, divine library, if you want to put it like that, that we all have access to. Now, if you want to know more about this, it's not only um, the information in this book of mine, which is now on, um, available on Amazon. Uh, there's the information on this book, which is now available on Amazon. And there's a similarly titled online course using tarot for successful decisions that describes not only the wheel of fortune but the entire journey the entire journey throughout life indicating the the role of each one of the tarot major arcana is described in this course and also in the book so that is available i will add the links to you for you later on so how do you access all of this? It is a massive amount of, of knowledge, of information, of wisdom. And the Wheel of Fortune card makes a huge promise that we can access this information at any time and the wisdom as well. Here's a method that really is incredibly helpful. I first came across this, this particular journaling method in a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. This is quite a, quite a famous book and I'm sure you will benefit greatly from getting hold of this book as well. I will give you the, the highlights here of this particular journaling uh, method of journaling. The first step is get yourself an A4 exercise book and a pen. And, and it must be A4, it must be A4 size. Then you set your alarm for about 30 minutes earlier than normal and you have a book, the book and the pen ready next to your bed. So. Yes, I do understand 30 minutes earlier than usual. I understand that, but I will explain why as well. Now, some people are going to say, but this is not possible. I've got small children. I cannot rely on that. I've got a different routine, so I, can't, I cannot do it. Uh, yes, you can. What you can do is leave this journal for when, for when you go to bed. When you're really tired, you're ready to go to sleep. And you are already feeling sleepy enough to just keel over and start snoring. So th that's also a good time. Early mornings is best, but evenings just before you go to sleep is, is, is also is good enough to, as long as you do this. So what do you do? Assuming that you do this first thing in the morning when you wake up, when the alarm goes off, the first thing you do, you don't even get out of bed. You start writing immediately. And there are, are a few rules around this writing that you absolutely have to follow religiously. And for best results, don't cheat. Just follow these rules and you will access this immense, vast um, uh, con container of knowledge, uh, which is everything that the, the, the Wheel of Fortune card promises. So when you wake up, you start writing. Why do you do that before, just before you wake up or alternatively just before you go to sleep? 
because you make the best of the sleep mode that your brain is still in. So when you wake up, your brain, you're not immediately wide awake, especially those people who need coffee first thing in the morning. Your brain is still in sleep mode. What that means is that there's a little sensor that says here, He's the one that says to you, oh, no, you can't write that. Oh, what will people say? No, goodness, no, you'll, you'll go to hell if you, if you write that. He's still asleep. He's still asleep. And that's why the timing is so important. So because he's still asleep, you have free reign. You can write whatever it is that comes up in your, in your, in your mind. And that's the second tool. Write down anything that is in your mind at that time without questioning it. So it could be that you just woke up from a from a dream. Write down the details of the dream. It could be that you went to bed with a question in your mind and you wake up with the same question in your mind. Write down the question. Write down absolutely anything. Just keep writing. Don't think. Don't think about it. Um, whatever it is, keep writing. Um, it might be that you think, well, I've got nothing to write. It doesn't matter then you write exactly that. You will say, I don't know what to write about next, but you keep writing. You have to write three pages, then you stop. At the end of the three or four pages, you stop. If it's in mid-sentence, you stop. Because once you've completed three pages of writing, you're awake. You lose those benefits of the sleep mode and the little things will kick in and the process starts losing its value. You do not stop until you've written three pages. You don't know what to write next, then you write that. I don't know what to write next. And you keep writing that until the next thought comes into your mind. Now, we talked about the inner sensor, the one that's in here that tells you what you can, can and cannot write. How about the, the external sensor? And there could be more than one of those. It doesn't, so, so here do you get around the external sensor. You don't tell anyone that you're keeping this journal. You don't tell a self. Because the moment you do so, people want, want to know, what do you write in there? Um, what, why do you do it? Uh, how long are you going to do it? What have you written so far? You, want, you don't want to be questioned. Because the moment you, you get questioned, the sensor kicks in, you become aware of what you write. You don't need that kind of pressure. What's important is that you just write and you don't tell anybody. And then a really, the final really important rule, for the first two months, you do this every single morning. You write three pages, you stop at the end of the three pages. If you don't know what to write next, that's exactly what you do. You say, I don't know, you write, I don't know what to write next. You do not read at any time what you've written. It doesn't matter what you write. What matters is that you, is the fact that you write. After two months, if you want to, you can buy, uh, you can read back on what you've written, or you might not want to. So what can you expect when you follow these rules, apart from accessing this vast repository of, un, uh, of knowledge in the collective unconscious? You can expect these things. Firstly, your handwriting will fluctuate. Your handwriting will be small, it becomes large, it becomes all over the place. It can be very tidy, it can be illegible. There can be so much motion behind it that you put too much pressure on the page. Whatever, it doesn't matter. This journal, remember, is between you and yourself. You don't need to explain to anybody why your handwriting changes. That's not the point. What is important is that you write. And then, of course, you can expect to be quite emotional at times. Don't try and avoid the tears. You allow your demons to come out, and they come out in a very safe manner. And you will know, as sure as I do, that this kind of crying, this kind of tears, is very, very healing. Allow it. Don't say, oh, I can't do that. Don't give that little thing to the benefit of a doubt. Allow those tears. Also, expect that you will ask questions. You know, as things come up in your mind and you write them down, you might ask a question. And you will get answers. Because a part of the writing is that you actually do access this repository of divine knowledge in the un collective unconscious. And you will get answers. Some answers you might not like. Some answers you might think, I don't believe this. Some answers will be just such profound, pure wisdom that you would think, I didn't write that. Just accept. It all, it all comes from you. It all comes through you. 
and it is okay. It is quite okay. So this journaling method is a means of accessing this repository of divine knowledge. Try that and it will give you access to all the different uh, mean, uh, means of, no, uh, of knowledge and information that is available to you. I'm also going to show you this link, which is a link to um, an online course where you can get more information about the Tarot Major Arcana Journeys to Life and what question each one of those cards ask you and how you can then get to, to an answer on that. The same name applies to the a book that I've published on Amazon, which is available as a hard copy in Kindle and also on audio. It provides you with this uh, information about Tarot Major Arcana, including the Wheel of Fortune. And then leading on to that is this wonderful, very, very potent means of journaling, which I'm sure you will absolutely love. It's been lovely talking to you and let me know how you how you do if you want to with this means of journaling. I don't even need to know about it. But sometimes it's nice to, to, to tell somebody that you know will not interfere in the process. I promise you I will not interfere in the process if you want to tell me. If you don't, good luck and enjoy it. Now, our next show is called The Road to Peace. Lessons from the Dalai Lama on Finding Harmony. My guest will be the director of the film, The Road to Peace, Leon Stupari. And we will talk about, uh, about peace, about achieving world peace. Yes, it is possible. Yes, it is going to be very, very hard work. Yes, we will learn how to do it, starting with the closest person that you know, which is me, myself and I. So I'm looking forward to meeting you again, same time, same place, next week, Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock GMT. Thank you and goodbye.